Good morning, uh, good morning, Washington D.C. It's, uh, <laughs> it's good to be home, uh, and it's good to be here with uh, with this community, this uh, community of builders and, and operators of, of critical services. Uh, you're a group that uh, that's building infrastructure that not only can't go down, uh, it can't go down because we're relying on it inside of all other services. And just listening to the agenda lined up today, the amount of interconnected uh, systems that everybody in this room is building, this is special. And the conversations uh, today are, um, we've got a lot of stuff to share. Uh, we've got a lot of ideas to share. Uh, we've got a lot, a lot of best practices to share. Um, and we've got a lot of shared, uh, shared mission. As, uh, as many of you all know, uh, we, started, uh, we started right here in, uh, just up the road on 14th Street in, uh, in a garage behind the, the flower shop and, and, and Peregrine's. Uh, and we started here in D.C. to be, be, close to, be close to our partners, whether it was USAID or World Bank or or UN, and you know, we're doing everything from uh, working on famine mapping with World Food Program, taking satellite imagery, and, and actually looking at the chlorophyll changes in the horn in 2011, to election monitoring work. And all these projects, bit by bit, uh, caused us to say, hey, we need better tools. We need better tools. And so each project we worked on, we started building those better tools. Uh, so what I want to show you now is some of the very first Mapbox maps to give you a sense of what our shared mission uh, looks like. Uh, many, uh, many of you all know we, we did a lot with State Department and National Democratic Institute on, uh, on election mapping. My first time into Kabul was uh, 2009 for the, for the presidential. So let me walk first through how, how an election uh, in a fairly austere environment like this works. Uh, first, you got to get the data there. Um, and this, this is, these are the data capturing devices, particularly the ballots uh, being, uh, uh, being delivered to polling stations. Uh, technically, it's, this is uh, called the data creation event. Uh, this is uploading the data back. And of course, you get a PDF. And the PDF gets you the president. The problem was the PDF. Uh, this was the top page of a 2,500-page report. Uh, and it, the data started to look funny, but you couldn't look at it. Our job was to come in and actually pull the data out and start analyzing it and start asking some pretty basic questions. Wait, there's 95% of votes to a single candidate in this polling station. And there's 100% ballot submission. Could that be a fraud criteria? Like just turning the map into a simple canvas to start interrogating the data, not just for election experts, but also for in-country experts. Well, what other patterns could we see? So we digitized a lot of old uh, Soviet maps. And here, you know, are, are there any correlations to some of those outliers based on pasture areas? Or wait a minute, does this have anything to do with ethnicity? Or could we actually pull the uh, threat assessment report from August 13th, right before the election, and you start seeing down here in southern Ghazni that maybe there's a high correlation to potential fraud and violence. Or what? There's voting in enemy controlled territory? Is that good? Is that bad for democracy? I don't know. That was not our job. But our job was to bring data out and create a canvas to have a debate and a conversation as we were trying to figure out and go up to a runoff. This work literally was the very first Mapbox map. Uh, at first, all this was uh, private uh, for Eikenberry and, uh, and State. Uh, and then, uh, then the magic happened. Tim Berners-Lee walks on the stage of TED and just showed you all the pictures I showed you as an example of open data standards and how elections could be transformed. This is the coolest dork moment possible. <laughs> the guy that wrote the web browser and made the internet fully accessible to all of us is now talking about how our maps are making data more accessible. So we went all in. 
we got a bigger, uh, bigger garage, which meant moving into the basement and uh, cleaning, cleaning that out. Gray, you helped with that. Uh, and then uh, everybody told us we were absolutely crazy. And there was no way uh, we were going to be able to pull, pull this off. There's no startup that can actually go in and want to go live map the world and, and put, out, put out these tools. But then, then we met somebody who was thinking as far out as we were. And to be able to not compromise and to bring in a lucky partner like this who gets some of the core fundamentals and core primitives, partnering with SoftBank has allowed us to double down our investment and accelerate the technology that we're building at a rate that allows me to stand here today and say this is seriously just the beginning. And I am thrilled to be here with you all today to start talking about what we're going to build next. It is still green fields out here and everybody in this room has the potential to step up here and build better services. The services for our government do not need to be legacy services. The services in disconnected environments should not be compromised. Together, we can be building these services, and I'm really excited for the conversations uh, happening both on stage and off stage today. So thank you all for coming. Welcome to GovSummit.